The 1D form of Faraday's law for free space is shown here. Now when we include the sigma, sigma star term, we're going to have dEz dx is minus sigma star hy plus mu dhy dt. In order to match our grid arrangement, we should evaluate this entire equation at integer time steps n and at half integer spatial positions, i plus 0.5. If we do this, we get ez i plus 1 at n minus ezi at n, all divided by delta x, is equal to minus sigma star hy at n and i plus 0.5 plus mu hy i plus 0.5 n half time step into the future minus hy i plus 0.5 and half time step into the past. All that divided by delta t. But as before for Ampere's law, we don't have hy at position at integer time step n stored in our computer since the magnetic fields are stored at half integer time steps. So again, we're going to use the semi-implicit approximation h, y, n, i plus 0.5 is about equal to h, y, i plus 0.5, n plus 0.5, plus h, y, i plus 0.5, n minus 0.5 over 2. So we can plug this in right here. After plugging in our semi-implicit approximation and then also solving for the future value of hy, you should have gotten an expression like the one shown here. As before, we can see that in order to account for magnetic loss, the sigma star of a material, we really just need to change the coefficients. So here, this would be dA and this would be d b and it seems to me that I forgot to put delta x here. So before your db was dt over mu delta x so looks like that's missing. I'll fix that for the slides that are going to be uploaded. Next time we're going to talk about how to implement the absorbing layer that we developed today on the left side of your one-dimensional model and we will also discuss how to test it to see how well it works.